Got some past exam questions here on carbonyl compounds. So if you wanted to have a go, the link to the PDFs in the description of the video. So just download the questions and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so the first question, NABH4 is a reducing agent. So what do ketones reduce to? Secondary alcohols. So the answer was B. Okay, so question two, we've got to come up with some chemical tests that would be able to identify and distinguish between C, D and E. So you can see I've written up the functional groups that they all contain. So C contains a ketone and a primary alcohol group. D, secondary alcohol and aldehyde. And E, tertiary alcohol and ketone. So the first thing I'm going to do is add Tollens reagent to all three. And that's going to identify the aldehyde because this is the only one that can produce a silver mirror. Okay, so there's that in words and the equation there. So Tollens is a mild oxidizing agent. So obviously the aldehyde group gets oxidized to the carboxylic acid. So that means we're left with C and E. Now look, both of them contain a ketone group. So it's pointless adding Brady's reagent or 2,4-DMP. So they'll both give you that yellow-orange precipitate. The way to do this is if you try and oxidize the alcohols, then obviously a primary alcohol will oxidize, tertiary alcohol won't. So what you would do is you would add acidified potassium dichromate and only C would give you that orange to green color change. E doesn't because it's a tertiary alcohol. So there it is in words and two possible equations here. You could either oxidize to the aldehyde so you just need one mole of reducing agent, you get one mole of water, or you could oxidize fully to the carboxylic acid. So you'd need two moles of oxidizing agent, but you still only get one mole of water. Okay, so part B now, we've got the uh, information here that if you use CeCl3 in the presence of NaBH4, it's only the ketone group that's gonna be reduced Obviously, without the CeCl3, both the carbonyl groups, the ketone and the aldehyde, could be reduced. So we just want to reduce this group here. So for the reducing agent, NaBH4, we re represent that with an H- ion. We need to show the relevant dipole. So there's a dipole across this um, carbonyl bond. So we need to show that. And then take a curly arrow from the pair of electrons on the H- ion to the carbon delta plus, and we repel a pair of electrons up onto the oxygen from the middle of that pi bond. So that's gonna give us this intermediate. Looks like this, and then if we bring a water molecule into play, put its dipoles on, and then we need to take a curly arrow from the lone pair on the O minus, to the delta positive hydrogen on the water, and then we just need to break that bond there. So that's gonna make that compound there, which is compound D, and obviously a hydroxide ion as well from the water. Question three, so the sodium cyanide acid mixture is effectively reacting um, HCN with the benzaldehyde. So what's gonna happen, if we think about the mechanism, the CN minus ion is gonna attack that slightly positive carbon it's going to repel the pi electron pair up onto the O so that's going to generate this intermediate here so it'll be an O minus there's the CN there's the H and then the H from the HCN H plus and then just put that lone pair on it's going to grab that so obviously that's going to become an OH group and so therefore the product is B, so that one there. Question four now, so you can see I've written up the functional groups in compound D. We've got secondary alcohol here and we've got a primary alcohol here. So if you um, react it under reflux with excess K2Cr2O7 slash H2SO4, obviously that's an oxidizing agent. It's gonna oxidize this secondary alcohol group to a ketone and it's going to oxidize under reflux the primary alcohol to the carboxylic acid. So compound F is going to look like that. And the second reaction, so you can see what's happened here. The carboxylic acid group hasn't changed. 
but the ketone group has changed back into the secondary alcohol. So it's obviously been reduced. The reducing agent's already featured on this set of questions, NABH4. What would you observe during reaction one? So reaction one, you've got the acidified potassium dichromate reacting and it goes from orange to green. So suggest why these conditions were used. So why is reflux used rather than uh, the reaction mixture being distilled? Well, if we distilled compound E, you would have got um, an aldehyde group here. You'd have still got the ketone there, but you wouldn't have got the carboxylic acid group. So the reflux ensures that you get the carboxylic acid group that you want, because obviously it features in the final product G. What type of reaction is reaction two? So remember that was the, the ketone group turning back to a secondary alcohol. So you could say reduction or you could say nucleophilic addition. Part B, describe a chemical test you could use to detect the presence of a carbonyl group in a, an organic compound. So obviously that's reacted with 2,4-DNP or Brady's reagent. And the observation is you get a yellow-orange precipitate. And the final question, we've got to work out the percentage yield for compound G. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the moles of E that's been used. Mass over MR, 4.56, and we're told the MR of E is 160. So that comes out at 0 0.0285. The moles of G that's formed, mass over its MR, so 3.15. Its MR is 174, and that comes out at 0 0.0181. And then obviously, the ratio is 1 to 1, so we would expect that many moles of G to form, but we've only got that many moles. So percentage yield, we just go that over that times 100. And the three significant figures, that's 63.5%.